Hello. Good morning. Hello. Okay, I don't see me now. Yes. Where am I? You'll need to switch your video on. I'll just do that for you. Okay. Yeah, you should be able to start your video, yes. Um, I just did. Yes. Yes. So Here we are. Let's begin with an introduction. Uh, this is Akshay Santhalia. And we are here to uh, launch the book, The Trial 2, by Catherine Robertson. I hope I pronounced the name right. And uh, we look forward to an interesting and engaging event here. And let us over to you, Kathy. Uh, OK, thank you. Well, I'd like to start by talking a little bit about book two. Um, first of all, the main character in this series of books is a non-binary public servant on the futuristic planet of Wraith. Um, as in the first book, someone is on trial again. I can't say much more about that without giving away the end of the first book. Um, but somebody does try to poison Insa in book two, and of course the book explores trying to find the truth of that matter. Um, the High Council has two weighty decisions to make, and, uh, it explores those decisions and how they affect the characters in book one and two. Okay. Really interesting, and I really hope so that people find the book too interesting, and so much so that they go for the book one if they've not read that. Yeah, me too. I, I you don't have to read book one to get book two, but it helps set the background, of course. Okay. So, what was your inspiration um, um, behind? Writing the book. Well, I got the idea for the trial series uh, because I was a court reporter for 24 years. And I was enamored with the court system and how it functioned. I wanted to um, portray the judiciary in an interesting light from a different perspective. Um, so that's how I got the idea for the titles of the book and partially what they're about. Uh, it was also really important to me to write the series with the main character being non-binary. Uh, so many people I meet say, I can't get used to using they, them pronouns. It's too hard. And I would like to see literature and mainstream communication use these pronouns as a natural and everyday occurrence. Uh, the more often people encounter a new idea, the easier it is for them to accept. And our language does change and develop constantly. And although much of the new nomenclature meets with resistance, if used often enough, it soon does become mainstream verbiage. Um, so that's an important aspect of the series of books for me also. Well, so I just wanted to but in here that as a court reporter for 24 years, what was it like exactly? Uh, and also you mentioned that it was important for you to write a series with the main character being non-binary. So I just hope for the sake of our listeners and audience here, uh, if everybody does not know what does the word non-binary mean, if you can exemplify or share a bit more on that. Sure. Um, I'll try to say what that is. First of all, as a court reporter, I was a freelance court reporter. So I was involved in a lot of travel. It was very exciting for a 21-year-old. I, I got to travel the United States extensively. And, um, you know, I took depositions of different experts on different days. So... I might talk to, listen to a brain surgeon all day one day and a roofer the next. Well, I can't perform brain surgery or put a roof on, but I know enough to be dangerous. <laughs> um, 
after listening to an expert for an entire day, you do get some idea of what their work is about, to say the least. Um, it was it was very interesting work, exactly what I wanted. There was none of that nine to five pesky office guest type work. I I worked in different places, different times. Of course, at times that meant I worked until one in the morning. And when I had children, that was quite difficult many times, making sure they were taken care of. Um, so it was rather nerve wracking. But all in all, it was a very, very good career. Um, I enjoyed it immensely for years and years. As far as non-binary, non it is just someone who does not identify as either male or female. Um, mm. And so they use the they, them pronouns. Um, my child is non-binary and I suppose that's where I got my most interest for that uh, area. Interesting. So then moving on, um, why why did you delve into the world of writing? <laughs> the first is that what I mean? As a teenager, I initially began writing to deal with all that angst we all feel as teenagers, the stuff we're going through that it appears so difficult when we're teenagers. I did write a lot of poetry and songs at that point in time full of raw feelings and pain. And it, it helped me tremendously. Um, I think I saw myself as a tortured artist. Uh, I have always dreamed of becoming a published author, but I never did submit any of my writing for publication until four years ago. Um, I was too afraid of getting rejection letters. Um, I've now been rejected a number of times, and I will say I believe it only serves to make me as... A better writer. Um, Free Spirit, who's hosting this event, has published four of my short stories in anthologies in addition to these two books. And I have the titles of those anthologies if you care to hear them. We have published four anthologies and mostly. Uh, those have been on different themes and concepts, but I'll refrain your from sharing. I can just share the titles. Those are mm -hmm. uh, Reaching the Dead End, then uh, Dialogue at the Bar with a Drinking Partner. Then there was one on Student Life. There was one more that we published for you. And the Wishing Well. The Wishing Well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the wishing well. So it's like uh, the whole mix of genres here which we were dealing with and you were there in all of them. And I hope that we have more of you coming in more of our anthologies. And uh, But the focus here today is the book launch of your title that is a trial too. So let's uh, delve back right in. You mentioned here that your book is more about speculative fiction. So when did you begin writing speculative fiction? Well, I took a course at Washburn University. They have the whole state of Kansas at the university. Once you turn 60, you can take an audit any class you want for free. So I've been taking advantage of that. And four or five years ago, I took a course on writing speculative fiction. Prior to that time, I had read a lot of science fiction, fantasy, etc. And I loved that genre, but I had never attempted to write in that genre before. Uh, during that class, I did have a fantastic professor and a very good class from which to gain insight and feedback on my writing. Um, it did give me the incentive to write speculative fiction. And other than my memoir, I've now written exclusively speculative fiction. It, um, 
holds a great interest for me. So uh, that's really interesting to know. Now, getting onwards, uh, tell us about yourself so that our readers and people who read your book and who otherwise don't get to know you when they're reading your book, get to know a little bit about you. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm the proud mother of twin children. I need to brag and say that both of them have their PhDs. I'm very proud of them for that and many of their accomplishments. I am a proud grandmother of three accomplished 13-year-old grandsons. One of them is a fantastic artist. One of them is a talented soccer player. And one of them is a talented trombone player. Um, they're all accomplished gamers, of course. <laughs> I began kayaking just three years ago. Um I love to kayak. I get out every chance I can. I've now learned to load it and load it by myself so I can go when I want. I have not done any moving water. I stay in the lakes. Um, it's much safer for me that way. If I ever do do moving water, of course, I'll go with other people. I traveled overseas for the first time two years ago for my 65th birthday. I gave that myself that present for my 65th birthday, and I traveled over there again this year. Um, I'm a photographer, and I have had several of my photographs published also. Um, as I stated before, I was a court reporter for 24 years, and I've always been a logophile. Um, that's a lover of words. I'm currently a direct support professional for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities, quite challenging and rewarding work. Um, before that, I had been a caregiver for a person in a wheelchair for 20 years after my court reporting. So that's what my field has been since I left court reporting. Uh, Many nights, finally typing away on my computer at 3 a.m., I find that's when I write best. Um, if I'm not writing, I'm reading. I love reading murder mysteries and speculative fiction. I read a lot of Patricia Cornwell novels. I've read all her things, and I have one ordered that's a new one coming out in October. Uh, my child just introduced me to a series of speculative fiction books. The first one is entitled The Encyclopedia of Fairies. And I read the first two books while camping in two days. And I've ordered the third book, which isn't out until February of 25. So you can tell I love those books. It was a great choice that she gave me. I am a single lesbian. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm thoroughly enjoying my life with my dog, who's a pug named Chewy. Wow, that was interesting. Now, for anybody who would like to ask any questions, they can definitely post those questions in the chat box, and we will certainly get back to you around the end of the show. So, is there anything else, uh, Kathy, that you would like to talk about? For example, do you have any other projects uh, coming up in the near yeah. future? Except uh, yeah. a, a, couple, a couple of things. First of all, um, I have also written my memoir. And I took a class this last semester at Washburn on writing creative nonfiction. And it helped me focus that book in and whittle it down. I finally finished my memoir. It's now out um, at publishers um, to seek publication. Um, I also have more books coming out in this series. The next book which is in draft form, is a prequel to books one and two. 
focusing on Elsa's childhood and how she became a public servant. And I have begun writing the fourth and final book of the series, just began it in the last week or so. Um, but I'm, I haven't even decided exactly which direction it's going to go yet. So it's developing as I'm writing it. Oh, so we look forward to publishing those and reaching the readers who are interested and are following the series ardently to get those as well when that comes out, I suppose. Now, uh, then we come to the point where maybe if you are comfortable, you can read out an excerpt from the book that we have published today. Oh, sure. Uh, I just picked something short to read as an excerpt. Um, it says, Insa was hanging on by a thread. They were still in a coma. Their blood pressure was so low that the doctor kept feeling, forcing fluids day and night. Their normally tanned skin appearing a sickly green. Hold on, I can't get my page turned. Hmm. A sickly pale green. The doctors put Insa on vasopressor infusions and monitored them closely. The nurses who were caring for Insa were kept to a minimum and were sworn to secrecy. The stark and sterile surroundings in Ensa's medical room were cold and impersonal. The medical personnel were the only ones allowed in Ensa's room. Ensa slept the sleep of the dead. They did not toss and turn. They breathed softly and evenly with the help of the respirator. They were There were no wrinkles in the covers, and the pillow was only slightly dented where Ensa's head rested. The quiet was disarming. Insa's mind floated in a white cloud of cotton-like material. They thought they could hear people coming and going, even talking, but Insa could not make out what it was the people were saying. Insa felt safe and secure in this nondescript space, but there was some underlying urgency. What was it they needed to do? Insa could not recall time and events prior to this comforting haze. It was all encompassing and ever-present. Had there been time before this awareness? Had Insa existed in another world? Insa tried not to concentrate on these questions. They made Insa uneasy and made Insa want to struggle against some unknown foe. Better just to float through the mist, unknowing and unquestioning. That is where Insa's true peace existed. Insa could rest here indefinitely. Very interesting. <clears throat> Very interesting. Congratulations. I'm sorry. Uh, we have one person here. Uh, Gaurav, hi. Yeah, I go. Hi, hi. Uh, you have a question. No, no, I don't have a question, but uh, I like uh, the way of uh, explanation. Okay. And also, I read the trial also. This one I have, this book. Wow. The oh, trial great. one. You, you can see. Great. Yes. Great. Did see, you enjoy you it? See. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy it. And the first is very good. And uh, definitely, I uh, love to read second one. And I'm Thank from you. Bollywood. I'm an actor in Bollywood. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And Akshay is a very good friend of mine. All thank right. you very thank much. Thank you, Gaurav, for that yeah. input. I really appreciate it. You can see, uh, uh, see, uh, see my background. Yes, I can see. Yeah. Thank right. you for that. So I'm, I'm, I'm promoting your uh, first book. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. uh, is, uh, I'd like to open it up for everybody. If there is any questions anybody would like to ask, this is a good time. We have completed a round of questions that we had for our author, unless anybody wishes to ask anything up front. Oh, I just, excuse me, Kathy, I'd just like to say congratulations on your latest effort. 
and much more success for all of your literary endeavors. Thank you. Thank That's you. Ruth. Isn't it? Thank yes. You so much. Good to good to see you, Ruth. Yes, likewise. I lost my. I can't see on. Can you still see me on the camera? No, I'll just no. try to help you. Oh, there, there we go. Yes. Yeah. Here we go. All right. So with that, we come to the end of the show. So we would first like to thank everybody who has come for this event. Vance, Ruth, Sharon, Gaurav. And I think one or two of us left the show. So I even want to thank them while they were around. And then I would like to thank uh, Gaurav for speaking up and Ruth for sharing a few good courteous words and with that I think we'll just conclude and would you like to say something uh, Catherine? I just want to thank those of you who came and I hope you'll read my books and enjoy them and Good luck to all the other authors out there working so hard. And that's it. Okay. With that, uh, the last thing that I would like to share is that the books are going to be available and are available on our official website. That is poetschoice.in in case anybody wants to get a copy. And they will be very soon available everywhere else. Although that isn't something which we control, so we cannot say when. We can just promise you that they will be there everywhere else. All right. So thank you so much. Namaste. Good morning to all in USA and good night to everybody in India. All right. Thank you. Namaste. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.